Agenda 21, Chapter 5, Demographic Dynamics and Sustainability, 5.1. This chapter contains the following program areas. A. Developing and disseminating knowledge concerning the links between demographic trends and factors and sustainable development. B. Formulating integrated national policies for environment and development, taking into account demographic trends and factors. C. Implementing integrated environment and development programs at the local level, taking into account demographic trends and factors. Program areas. A. Developing and disseminating knowledge concerning the links between demographic trends and factors and sustainable development. Basis for action. 5.2. Demographic trends and factors and sustainable development have a synergistic relationship. 5.3. The growth of world population and production combined with unsustainable consumption patterns places increasingly severe stress on the life-supporting capacities of our planet. These interactive processes affect the use of land, water, air, energy, and other resources. Rapidly growing cities, unless well-managed, face major environmental problems. The increase in both the number and size of cities calls for greater attention to issues of local government and municipal management. The human dimensions are key elements to consider in this intricate set of relationships and they should be adequately taken into consideration in comprehensive policies for sustainable development. Such policies should address the linkages of demographic trends and factors, resource use, appropriate technology dissemination, and development. Population policy should also recognize the role played by human beings in environmental and development concerns. There is a need to increase awareness of this issue among decision makers at all levels and to provide both better information on which to base national and international policies and a framework against which to interpret this information. 5.4. There is a need to develop strategies to mitigate both the adverse impact on the environment of human activities and the adverse impact of environmental change on human populations. The world's population is expected to exceed 8 billion by the year 2020. 60% of the world's population already live in coastal areas, while 65% of cities with populations above 2.5 million are located. Along the world coasts, several of them are already at or below the present sea level. Objectives. 5.5. The following objectives should be achieved as soon as practicable. A. To incorporate demographic trends and factors in the global analysis of environment and development issues. B. To develop a better understanding of the relationships among demographic dynamics, technology, cultural behavior, natural resources, and life support systems. C. To assess human vulnerability in ecologically sensitive areas and centers of population to Determine the priorities for action at all levels, taking full account of community-defined needs, activities, research on the interaction between demographic trends and factors and sustainable development. 5.6. Relevant international, regional and national institutions should consider undertaking the following. Activities. A. Identifying the interactions between demographic processes, natural resources and life support. Systems, bearing in mind regional and subregional variations deriving from, inter alia, different levels of development. b. Integrating demographic trends and factors into the ongoing study of environmental change. Using the expertise of international, regional and national research networks and of local communities, first, to study the human dimensions of environmental change and, second, to identify vulnerable areas c. Identifying priority areas for action and developing strategies and programs to mitigate the adverse impact of environmental change on human populations, and vice versa. Means of implementation. a. Financing and cost evaluation. 5.7. The Conference Secretariat has estimated the average total annual cost, 1993 to 2000, of implementing the activities of this program to be about $10 million from the international community on grant or concessional terms. 
These are indicative and order of magnitude estimates only and have not been reviewed by governments. Actual costs and financial terms, including any that are non-concessional, will depend upon, inter alia, the specific strategies and programs governments decide upon for implementation. b. Strengthening research programs that integrate population, environment, and development. 5.8. In order to integrate demographic analysis into a broader social science perspective on environment and development, interdisciplinary research should be increased. International institutions and networks of experts should enhance their scientific capacity, taking full account of community experience and knowledge, and should disseminate the experience gained in multidisciplinary approaches and in linking theory to action. 5.9. Better modeling capabilities should be developed, identifying the range of possible outcomes of current human activities, especially the interrelated impact of demographic trends and factors, per capita resource use and wealth distribution, as well as the major migration flows that may be expected with increasing climatic events and cumulative environmental change that may destroy people's local livelihoods. c. Developing information and public awareness. 5.10. Sociodemographic information should be developed in a suitable format for interfacing with physical, biological and socioeconomic data, compatible spatial and temporal scales, cross-country and time series information, as well as global behavioral indicators should be developed, learning from local communities' perceptions and attitudes. 5.11. Awareness should be increased at all levels concerning the need to optimize the sustainable use of resources through efficient resource management, taking into account the development needs of the populations of developing countries. 5.12. Awareness should be increased of the fundamental linkages between improving the status of women and demographic dynamics, particularly through women's access to education, primary and reproductive health care programs, economic independence and their effective, equitable participation in all levels of decision-making. 5.13. Results of research concerned with sustainable development issues should be disseminated through technical reports, scientific journals, the media, workshops, forums, or other means so that the information can be used by decision-makers at all levels and increase public awareness. d. Developing and or enhancing institutional capacity and collaboration. 5.14. Collaboration and exchange of information should be increased between research institutions and international, regional and national agencies and all other sectors, including the private sector, local, communities, non-governmental organizations and scientific institutions, from both the industrialized and developing countries, as appropriate. 5.15. Efforts should be intensified to enhance the capacities of national and local governments, the private sector and non-governmental organizations in developing countries to meet the growing needs for improved management of rapidly growing urban areas. b. Formulating integrated national policies for environment and development, taking into account demographic trends and factors. Basis for action. 5.16. Existing plans for sustainable development have generally recognized demographic trends and Factors as elements that have a critical influence on consumption patterns, production, lifestyles and long-term sustainability. But in future, more attention will have to be given to these issues in general. Policy formulation and the design of development plans. To do this, all countries will have to improve their own capacities to assess the environment and development implications of their demographic trends and factors. They will also need to formulate and implement policies and action programs, where appropriate. Policies should be designed to address the consequences of population growth built into population momentum, while at the same time incorporating measures to bring about demographic transition. They should combine environmental concerns and population issues within a holistic view of development whose primary goals include the alleviation of poverty, secure livelihoods, good health, 
quality of life, improvement of the status and income of women and their access to schooling and professional training, as well as fulfillment of their personal aspirations, and empowerment of individuals and communities. Recognizing that large increases in the size and number of cities will occur in developing countries under any likely population scenario, greater attention should be given to preparing for the needs, in particular of women and children, for improved municipal management and local government. Objective 5.17 Full integration of population concerns into national planning, policy, and decision making. Processes should continue. Population policies and programs should be considered, with full recognition of women's rights. Activities. 5.18. Governments and other relevant actors could, inter alia, undertake the following activities, with appropriate assistance from aid agencies, and report on their status of implementation to the International Conference on Population and Development to be held in 1994, especially to its Committee on Population and Environment. A. Assessing the implications of national demographic trends and factors. 5.19. The relationships between demographic trends and factors and environmental change and between environmental degradation and the components of demographic change should be analyzed. 5.20. Research should be conducted on how environmental factors interact with socioeconomic factors as a cause of migration. 5.21. Vulnerable population groups, such as rural landless workers, ethnic minorities, refugees, migrants, displaced people, women heads of household, whose changes in demographic structure may have specific impacts on sustainable development should be identified. 5.22. An assessment should be made of the implications of the age structure of the population on Resource demand and dependency burdens, ranging from educational expenses for the young to health, care and support for the elderly, and on household income generation. 5.23. An assessment should also be made of national population carrying capacity in the context of satisfaction of human needs and sustainable development, and special attention should be given to critical resources, such as water and land, and environmental factors such as ecosystem health and biodiversity. 5.24. The impact of national demographic trends and factors on the traditional livelihoods of indigenous groups and local communities, including changes in traditional land use because of internal population pressures, should be studied. b. Building and strengthening a national information base. 5.25. National databases on demographic trends and factors and environment should be built and or strengthened, disaggregating data by ecological region, ecosystem approach, and population environment profiles should be established by region. 5.26 Methodologies and instruments should be developed to identify areas where sustainability is, or may be, threatened by the environmental effects of demographic trends and factors, incorporating both current and projected demographic data linked to natural environmental processes. 5.27. Case studies of local level responses by different groups to demographic dynamics should be developed, particularly in areas subject to environmental stress and in deteriorating urban centers. 5.28. Population data should be disaggregated by, inter alia, sex and age in order to take into account the implications of the gender division of labor for the use and management of natural resources. c. Incorporating demographic features into policies and plans. 5.29. In formulating human settlements policies, account should be taken of resource needs, waste, production and ecosystem health. 5.30. 5.30. The direct and induced effects of demographic changes on environment and development. Programs should, where appropriate, be integrated, and the impact on demographic features. Assessed. 5.31. 5.31. National population policy goals and programs that are consistent with national environment and development plans for sustainability and in keeping with the freedom, dignity and Personally held values of individuals should be established and implemented. 
5.32.5.32. Appropriate socio-economic policies for the young and the elderly, both in terms of family and state support systems, should be developed. 5.33, 5.33. Policies and programs should be developed for handling the various types of migrations that result from or induce environmental disruptions with special attention to women and vulnerable groups. 5.34, 5.34. Demographic concerns, including concerns for environmental migrants and displaced people, should be incorporated in the programs for sustainable development of relevant international and regional institutions. 5.35, 5.35. National reviews should be conducted and the integration of population policies in national development and environment strategies should be monitored nationally. Means of implementation. A. Financing and cost evaluation. 5.36. The Conference Secretariat has estimated the average total annual cost, 1993 to 2000, of implementing the activities of this program to be about $90 million from the international community on grant or concessional terms. These are indicative and order of magnitude estimates only and have not been reviewed by governments. Actual costs and financial terms, including any that are non concessional, will depend upon inter alia, the specific strategies and programs. Governments decide upon for implementation. b. Raising awareness of demographic and sustainable development interactions. 5.37. Understanding of the interactions between demographic trends and factors and sustainable. Development should be increased in all sectors of society. Stress should be placed on local and national. Action. Demographic and sustainable development education should be coordinated and integrated in both the formal and non-formal education sectors. Particular attention should be given to population. Literacy programs, notably for women. Special emphasis should be placed on the linkage between these programs, primary environmental care and the provision of primary health care and services. C. Strengthening institutions. 5.38. The capacity of national, regional and local structures to deal with issues relating to demographic trends and factors and sustainable development should be enhanced. This would involve strengthening the relevant bodies responsible for population issues to enable them to elaborate policies consistent with the national prospects for sustainable development. Cooperation among government, national research institutions non-governmental organizations and local communities in assessing problems and evaluating policies should also be enhanced. 5.39. The capacity of the relevant United Nations organs, organizations and bodies, international and regional intergovernmental bodies, non-governmental organizations and local communities should, as appropriate, be enhanced to help countries develop sustainable development policies on request and, as appropriate, provide assistance to environmental migrants and displaced people. 5.40. Interagency support for national sustainable development policies and programs should be improved through better coordination of population and environment activities. d. Promoting human resource development. 5.41. The international and regional scientific institutions should assist governments, upon request, to include concerns regarding the population-environment interactions at the global, ecosystem and microlevels in the training of demographers and population and environment specialists. Training should include research on linkages and ways to design integrated strategies. C. Implementing integrated environment and development programs at the local level, taking into account demographic trends and factors. Basis for action. 5.42. Population programs are more effective when implemented together with appropriate cross-sectoral policies. To attain sustainability at the local level, a new framework is needed that integrates demographic trends and factors with such factors as ecosystem health, technology and human settlements, and with socio-economic structures and access to resources. Population programs. 
should be consistent with socio-economic and environmental planning. Integrated sustainable development programs should closely correlate action on demographic trends and factors with resource management activities and development goals that meet the needs of the people concerned. Objective 5.43 Population programs should be implemented along with natural resource management and development programs at the local level that will ensure sustainable use of natural resources. Improve the quality of life of the people and enhance environmental quality. Activities 5.44 Governments and local communities, including community-based women's organizations and national non-governmental organizations, consistent with national plans, objectives, strategies and priorities, could, inter alia, undertake the activities set out below with the assistance and cooperation of international organizations, as appropriate. Governments could share their experience in the implementation of Agenda 21 at the International Conference on Population and Development, to be held in 1994, especially its Committee on Population and Environment. A. Developing a Framework for Action. 5.45. An effective consultative process should be established and implemented with concerned groups of society where the formulation and decision-making of all components of the programs are based on a nationwide consultative process drawing on community meetings, regional workshops and national seminars, as appropriate. This process should ensure that views of women and men on needs, perspective and constraints are equally well reflected in the design of programs, and that solutions are rooted in specific experience. The poor and underprivileged should be priority groups in this process. 5.46 Nationally determined policies for integrated and multifaceted programs, with special attention to women, to the poorest people living in critical areas and to other vulnerable groups should be implemented, ensuring the involvement of groups with a special potential to act as agents for change and sustainable development. Special emphasis should be placed on those programs that achieve multiple objectives, encouraging sustainable economic development and mitigating adverse impacts of demographic trends and factors and avoiding long-term environmental damage. Food security. Access to secure tenure, basic shelter and essential infrastructure, education, family welfare, women's reproductive health, family credit schemes, reforestation programs, primary environmental care. Women's employment should, as appropriate, be included among other factors. 5.47. An analytical framework should be developed ed to identify complementary elements of sustainable development policies as well as the national mechanisms to monitor and evaluate their effects on population dynamics. 5.48. Special attention should be given to the critical role of women in population environment programs and in achieving sustainable development. Projects should take advantage of opportunities to link social, economic and environmental gains for women and their families. Empowerment of women is essential and should be assured through education, training and policies to accord and improve women's right and access to assets, human and civil rights, labor saving measures, job opportunities, and participation in decision-making. Population, environment. Programs must enable women to mobilize themselves to alleviate their burden and improve their capacity to participate in and benefit from socio-economic development. Specific measures should be undertaken to close the gap between female and male illiteracy rates. B. Supporting programs that promote changes in demographic trends and factors towards sustainability. 5.49. Reproductive health programs and services should, as appropriate, be developed and enhanced to reduce maternal and infant mortality from all causes and enable women and men to fulfill their personal aspirations in terms of family size, in a way in keeping with their freedom and dignity and personally held values. 5.50. Governments should take active steps to implement, as a matter of urgency, in accordance with country-specific conditions and legal systems, measures to ensure that women and men have the same 
right to decide freely and responsibly on the number and spacing of their children, to have access to the information, education, and means, as appropriate, to enable them to exercise e this right in keeping with their freedom, dignity, and personally held values taking into account ethical and cultural considerations. 5.51. Governments should take active steps to implement programs to establish and strengthen preventive and curative health facilities that include women-centered, women-managed, safe and effective reproductive health care and affordable, accessible services, as appropriate, for the responsible planning of family size, in keeping with freedom, dignity, and personally held values and taking into account ethical and cultural considerations. Programs should focus on providing comprehensive health care, including prenatal care, education, and information on health and responsible parenthood and should provide the opportunity for all women to breastfeed fully, at least, during the first four months postpartum. Programs should fully support women's productive and reproductive roles and well-being, with special attention to the need for providing equal and improved health care for all children and the need to reduce the risk of maternal and child mortality and sickness. 5.52 consistent with national priorities, culturally based information and education programs that transmit reproductive health messages to men and women that are easily understood should be developed. c. Creating appropriate institutional conditions. 5.53 Constituencies and institutional conditions to facilitate the implementation of demographic activities should, as appropriate, be fostered. This requires support and commitment from political, indigenous, religious and traditional authorities, the private sector and the national scientific community. In developing these appropriate institutional conditions, countries should closely involve established national machinery for women. 5.54 Population assistance should be coordinated with bilateral and multilateral donors to ensure that Population needs and requirements of all developing countries are addressed, fully respecting the overall coordinating responsibility and the choice and strategies of the recipient countries. 5.55. Coordination should be improved at local and international levels. Working practices should be enhanced in order to make optimum use of resources, draw on collective experience and improve the implementation of programs. UNFA and other relevant agencies should strengthen the coordination of international cooperation activities with recipient and donor countries in order to ensure that adequate funding is available to respond to growing needs. 5.56 Proposals should be developed for local, national and international population environment. Programs in line with specific needs for achieving sustainability. Where appropriate, institutional. Changes must be implemented so that old age security does not entirely depend on input from family members. Means of implementation. A. Financing and cost evaluation. 5.57. The Conference Secretariat has estimated the average total annual cost, 1993 to 2000, of implementing the activities of this program to be about $7 billion, including about $3.5 billion from the international community on grant or concessional terms. These are indicative and order of magnitude. Estimates only and have not been reviewed by governments. Actual costs and financial terms, including any that are non-concessional, will depend upon, inter alia, the specific strategies and programs governments decide upon for implementation. B. Research. 5.58. Research should be undertaken with a view to developing specific action programs. It will be necessary to establish priorities between proposed areas of research. 5.59. Sociodemographic research should be conducted on how populations respond to a changing environment. 5.60. Understanding of sociocultural and political factors that can positively influence acceptance of Appropriate population policy instruments should be improved. 5.61. Surveys of changes in needs for appropriate services relating to responsible planning of family. Size, 
reflecting variations among different socio-economic groups and variations in different geographical regions should be undertaken. C. Human Resource Development and Capacity Building 5.62 The areas of human resource development and capacity building, with particular attention to the education and training of women, are areas of critical importance and are a very high priority in the implementation of population programs. 5.63 Workshops to help program and projects managers to link population programs to other Development and environmental goals should be conducted. 5.64 Educational materials, including guides workbooks for planners and decision makers and other actors of population, environment, development programs, should be developed. 5.65 Cooperation should be developed between governments, scientific institutions and non-governmental organizations within the region and similar institutions outside the region. Cooperation with local organizations should be fostered in order to raise awareness, engage in demonstration, projects and report on the experience gained. 5.66 The recommendations contained in this chapter should in no way prejudice discussions at the International Conference on Population and Development in 1994, which will be the appropriate forum for dealing with population and development issues, taking into account the recommendations of the International Conference on Population, held in Mexico City in 1984, 1, and the forward-looking strategies for the advancement of women, 2, adopted by the World Conference to review and appraise the achievements of the United Decade for Women, Equality, Development and Peace, held in Nairobi in 1985. Notes. One report of the International Conference on Population, Mexico City, 6 to 14 August 1984, United Nations. Publication. Sales No. E.84.13.8, Chapter. I. 2 Report of the World Conference to Review and Appraise the Achievements of the United Nations. Decade for Women, Equality, Development and Peace, Nairobi, 15 to 26 July 1985, United Nations. Publication. Sales No. E.84.4.10, Chapter. I. Sect. A.